Network presents The Adventures of the Sea Hound with Captain Silver and Jerry. While Captain Silver outlined his plans to learn how the Indians in the jungles of Ecuador make their mysterious drug, Curare, Jerry was mighty uneasy. In fact, the red-haired boy who had just joined the crew of the Sea Hound broke in on the captain's story with a bold statement that a spy was among those present. Jerry accused the Chinese scholar called Kukai. He based his accusation on the fact that he had seen Kukai make secret entries in a black notebook. Kukai had certainly acted guilty when he found that Jerry had seen him. For a minute, it looked as if Jerry was right. Then Kukai produced the book. It was a very careful account of the captain's life from the time he was a little boy. Kukai was embarrassed by this evidence of his loyalty and devotion, but Jerry felt mighty silly when the truth came out. Then an urgent call for the captain came from the deck. A girl stood there. Her clothes were dripping wet, her face flushed with excitement. But the thing that caught the eye of Captain Silver was the water-soaked envelope in her hand. I must speak to Captain Silver, alone. Captain Silver knew the importance of that letter. It should have been delivered in Guayaquil. Instead, it was here on the Sea Hound. The only sign of the tense suppression of the captain's emotions was a thoughtful... Hmm. We'll go below, down that companionway. Yes, sir. It'll be warmer in the cabin. First door on the right. You are Captain Silver, aren't you? That's what I'm called. This door? Right. Oh, what a cozy cabin this is. Here's a jacket. Uh, Pull it over your shoulders. Thank you. You've seen this letter before? I gave it to a skipper who was taken aboard the Santa Lucia. It should be delivered in Guayaquil before night. Well, it it won't be. How did you get that letter? I I stole it. Hmm. Please don't look at me like that. I had to. You see, this letter's addressed to my father. Your father? I spent some time with your father in Guayaquil a year ago. Yes, I remember. He wrote me about it. I saw nothing of you. Well, Well, I was in Washington... Father had spent years there as a consul, and he wanted me to study there. Oh, believe me, Captain Silver, I'm telling the truth. You just happened to be on board the Santa Lucia? No. No, but let me explain. It wasn't a coincidence that the Santa Lucia met you. Father had the boat sent out to find you, if possible. I was on board because Father knew he could trust me. Go on. Well, there's been so much intrigue in Ecuador. You know Father's position. He's influential. Well, there's been all manner of pressure brought against him. Japanese agents, German representatives, other men from other nations. And they all try to damage the friendship between the United States and Ecuador. Now there's so few whom Father can trust. You said Senor Lopez ordered the Santa Lucia out to meet us? Yes. Why? Well, you were going to meet my father. I was. And this letter was to verify the appointment. Yes. Well, if it had been taken to our home, Father would not have seen it. He isn't at home. He, Well, he's practically in hiding. Where? I can't tell you. I wanted to speak to you while you were transferring the men from the Mary J to the Santa Lucia. But I didn't have the chance. I didn't see you on board the Santa Lucia. No, and for a very good reason. Someone locked me in my cabin. Locked you in? I don't know who it was, but but when I tried to leave, I found the door locked. I tried to shout from the porthole, but it was on the wrong side. And then after we'd pulled away, the door was unlocked as mysteriously as it had been locked. Hmm. Have you any idea who did it? No. No, but it might have been any one of a dozen men. There's no use going into detail about the way I learned of the letter. Father told me to use what judgment I had. I took the letter and then watched for a chance to slip over the stern of the Santa Lucia. We had a small powerboat behind, and I cut the painter, started the motor, and came back. You took a long chance, Miss Lopez. The sea hounds are smalled off on the open sea. Oh, it was clear. I sighted you a long way off. Where's the motorboat now? Gone, I guess. Gone? Well, I had the throttle opened wide, and when I came abreast, I dived off the motorboat and swam to the sea hound. The motorboat kept going. If it is found, perhaps the spies, whoever they are, will will think I've drowned. Why didn't you simply come alongside and let it go at that? Father told me I shouldn't put you in jeopardy. He made that emphatic. No matter what happens to him or to me, he said, you must be protected. Hmm. He has a rather poor sense of values. Your father is one of the most important men in Ecuador. He'd be grateful if he heard you say that. But you see, Captain Silver, if I had pulled alongside... You'd have towed the powerboat behind the sea hound. And why not? 
Well, if it had been seen by... by our enemies, they'd know you'd taken me on board. And then they'd know that you're helping Father, and they'd fight you as they're fighting him. How would they see it? I didn't plan to put in at Guayaquil. Well, Captain Silver, it might have been seen on the high sea. Seen by enemies that were invisible to you. How? By enemies in a submarine. Hmm. Has there been evidence of submarine activity around here? Yes, definitely. I see. And if they had the slightest reason to suspect you, they'd fire without warning. Suspect me of what? Well, if they knew that you're the one that Father counts on so heavily to... to help. To help? Oh, you know what I mean. Father didn't tell me very much about the man who went into the jungle, but I do know there is a doctor there. A doctor whose research is going to be terribly important. You're the man who's going to meet him. Well, the, the enemy wants to meet him, too. Oh, don't test me any further. Accept what I've told you is the truth. Father's waiting for you, and I'm to take you to him. Where? Well, I'll have to go with you. He said there would be a small boat on the Sea Hound. There is. Well, we'll have to use it tonight after dark and go to a place on the south coast of the harbor, south of Guayaquil. Father's to be there waiting for us. Hmm. You do believe me? I'll have Kukai find some dry clothing for you. He'll bring it to you in a moment. Thank you. Kukai. Yes, sir, Captain. Text on deck tells how girl leaped from passing motorboat and swam with skill to side of sea hound. Yes, yeah, she's told me about that, Kukai. She's Maria Lopez, the daughter of our friend. Mm, he who respects the state as his own person, is fit to govern it. He who loves the state as his own body is fit to be entrusted with it. Such a man is the Senor Lopez. Lopez is in danger. He's had to go into hiding. I'm going to have the spray hound lowered and go ashore with the girl. She's going to take me to her father's hiding place. You are quite sure, sir, this girl is all she claims to be? I know what she told me. I heard some of conversation. <laughs> I thought you would. Girl may lead you into a trap. On the other hand, girl may lead way to a meeting with the Senor Lopez. One must take risk. He who rejects iron cannot make it steel. Oh, yes. That's from Hang C's sacred edict. For daughter of Spanish family, girl's English is well spoken. That's why I think she's telling the truth. If spies sent someone to pose as the daughter of Senor Lopez, they would have had her speak anything but good English. This girl was in Washington when she was a child. Her father was there then. She went back to Washington to college. She probably speaks English better than Spanish. Now, find some clothes she can wear and take them to her. I'll have a look at the spray hound and make sure everything is ready for our trip tonight. I have a clothing ready. <laughs> I guess you heard everything that was said. The spray hound was a small, fast auxiliary sea skiff carried by the sea hound. Captain Silver designed the craft himself and knew just what she could do. Jerry came to his side as he checked gas and oil and made sure everything was ready. We might have a chase before we get back. Gee, I wish I was going with you. Not this time, Jerry. When will you be back? Sometime manana? What did you say? Manana. That's Spanish. It means tomorrow. <laughs> don't try that on anyone in Ecuador, Jerry. Why not? They speak Spanish, don't they? Yes, but you don't. Oh, but I read that. There was a little mark over the first N when you pronounced it, when you read that, wasn't there? A uh, mark like the letter S on its side? Yeah, that's right. I showed it to Tex and asked him what it was. <laughs> Tex wouldn't know. He called it the lazy S. The lazy S. <laughs> Tex would call it that. Someday I'm going to have to take his cowboy stories away from him and see that he gets different reading. That little mark, Jerry, is called a tilde. Tilde? Yes. It changes the sound of the letter N. Oh. It gives the letter N the sound of N-Y. Instead of saying manana, you should say manana. Manana. Yeah, that's more like it. Now you're on the course again. Manana. 
Gee, I'm glad I got that streak before I went out on a reef. Then you can say hasta mañana. Hasta mañana? Well, what's that mean? Until tomorrow. Oh, well, you might say it means goodbye or so long. I'll see you soon. Gee, I wonder how long it'll take me to learn to speak Spanish. Not very long. Anyone who can learn to speak English can certainly learn Spanish. A lot more regular. Yeah, there now, I guess everything is checked. Kukai went over the spray hound a short time ago. I know, I just thought I'd give her another going over while Kukai is taking the girls some dry clothing. Captain Silver, look at Tex. He's got something on his mind. Yeah, stay here, Jerry. I'll see what he wants. Below deck, Kukai knocked at the captain's cabin. Come in. Oh, you must be Kukai. Yes, Miss Priest. An order from Captain. Dry clothing is brought. Oh, thank you. Former owner of clothing was boy with red hair. Please accept apology for limitation which makes boy's clothing necessary in replacement of wet attire. Oh, these things will be fine. Thank you. Yes, Missy. Oh, wait. Kukai. Yes, Missy. Did Captain Silver believe me? Does he trust me? It, it's so important and I... Well, he looks at me so strangely. I felt that I didn't speak very convincingly. I wonder if he thought I was trying to lead him into some kind of a trap. True words are seldom fine. Fine words are often untrue. You mean that he... The captain is preparing small boat for a trip in darkness of night. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, come here. Yes, captain, sir, come. I come. Okay, get up on deck. Keep things under control. Yes, sir. No shots are to be fired. Yes, sir. Don't take a pistol. Put Tex at the wheel and dodge if you see a torpedo's wake. Yes, sir. Heave to if ordered. I'm going to wireless. Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Order Jepson and Jerry below. Keep them off the deck. I will, sir. No resistance under any circumstances. They want to board us, let them. I'll handle things when I finish on the radio. Has enemy been sighted? I don't know about an enemy, but Tex has sighted a periscope off our port side. Well, I'm the one they want. You'll get back into that cabin. Get into the dry clothes. No, no, let me go on deck where I can be seen. I'll surrender to them. You'll do nothing of the sort. If I don't, they're likely to fire without warning. My father told me to protect them. I don't care what your father told you. I'm giving orders here. On deck, Kukai. Aye, aye, sir. And you to the cabin. I won't. All right, then, to the wireless room with me. Let me go. Put me down, Captain Silver. Let me go. The submarine will sink you if If that submarine doesn't fire within the next two minutes, it won't fire at all. Well, what about that periscope? Is the sea hound going to face gunfire from a submarine? Or even worse, the shattering force of a heavy torpedo? A lot can happen in just two minutes. Tomorrow you'll learn how Captain Silver used a radio to drive a submarine into hiding. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at this same time for... The Adventures of the Sea Hound. Until tomorrow, then, Captain Silver says, Smooth sailing. Adventures of the Sea Hound, directed by Fred Way, come to you from New York. You're listening to the Blue Network.